If you've gotten this far, you've built out a really full-featured Android app. We allow the user to view the map that they've created and also allow them to create new ones. And we're saving these to a file so that we have persistence. The goal for this video is to polish the app and also do some concept review. In terms of polish, I had two ideas of simple things we can do which will improve the design and the look and feel of the app. First, you'll notice that if I tap on the floating action button, you can see that there's some sort of ripple animation where the background of the button becomes a little darker. And this gives the user a really nice feedback mechanism that they've tapped on it. I'd like the same thing to happen when I tap on one of the recycler view elements. Right now, I don't get any kind of feedback. The way we can make this work is by opening up Maps Adapter. And right now, each view in the Recycler view is an inbuilt simple list item one, which is coming from the Android SDK. All this is is a text view. Instead, we can create our own layout and we can apply some styling on that to have this background effect. So first, let's go into the layout, into resources, layout, and define a new layout resource file. I'll call it item user map. And the root element can just be a text view. Okay, so some of the tweaks we can do here is the ID, let's give it an ID of TV map title. Width of match parent is fine, but the height should be wrap content. It should just be tall enough to fit the contents. Uh, let's give it some sample text. We'll say Singapore And then let's make the font a little bigger. And also let's add some padding. I'll, I'll put 10 dp of padding all the way around. So if I apply it on, on this, that means it's saying apply 10 dp on all four, four sides. And finally, in order to have that selectable background for that ripple animation, the way we do that is by specifying a background. To get a bit more context, Google for code path ripple animation, and you can check out this code path guide Ripple Touch Effect was introduced with Android 5.0, um, API level 21, which is a, a few years ago now. Most phones should be running 5.0 or higher. And that's what gives us this nice effect of giving the user feedback of wherever they tapped on a button. The way we can make this happen is by having a selectable item background as the background attribute. So if I go into here and I search for background, and then I search here and then just search for selectable item background and it should show up. So now if we reference this newly created text view layout in the adapter, we should see the animation. So the item user map and we need to make sure that we update the reference here because the ID has changed. So we called it ID TV user map, TV map title. Let's try it. And we also expect the text to be larger now. Okay, so it does look bigger, which is good. And if I tap on one of these, you can see that we do see the background become darker, which feels a lot nicer to the user. I get a lot more intuitive sense of what's happening. The other improvement I like to make is an animation. Right now, when I tap on the recycler view, when I go into the detail view, uh, there's not really a clear activity animation from one screen to the next screen. But Android has really nice support for this. So if you go to the code path guide about animations, there's a section here about activity transitions. So all you need to do in order to uh, create these screen animations is call this method override pending transition after you call start activity. So let's, let's try that. Um, so in the main activity, wherever we call start activity, which is here, I'm going to call override pending transition. And this takes in two parameters, the enter animation. So the new activity, which we're navigating to, how does that enter? And the current activity, which is being exited, how should it exit? And so Android has a few built in. So let's try those initially. So for the enter animation, I'm going to just try out the slide in left. And then for the exit animation, I'm going to try out the slide out right. Let's try it. 
So now we expect something unique to happen, something different to happen when I tap on this in order to get to the detail view. So you can see how the main activity kind of moved out to the right and it feels like the map activity took its place by sliding in, which is pretty cool. However, at least for me, what's intuitive is the master view, which contains the index or the list of all the views, should slide out to the left and the entering view should come in on the right side. So I actually would prefer that these are flipped. So in order to do that, I'm going to copy this and just tweak it to fit that requirement. So I'm going to copy this. So we're going to create a new resource directory. And this is going to be of type animation. So we're going to create two animation files which are going to mirror the built-in one, slide in left and slide out right, but they're going to be opposite. So we're going to have slide in right instead of slide in left. And let's put this in. And in order to make it slide in from the right instead of the left, we need to start the X delta at 50% and then move to the neutral position. So what, what this is saying is start from this position and end, to this, end at this position. So instead of starting at negative 50, which means we're starting off the screen to the left and then going into the center of the screen, we instead want to start off the screen to the right and then come in to the neutral position. And then we want something similar for a slide out right. So let's copy this. Slide out left. And then similarly, um, we're going to start at the neutral position and we want to move left instead of right. So the only change I need to make is the 2x delta should be negative 50 instead of positive 50. So now that we've defined those, we can start referencing them here. So I'm going to get rid of the Android prefix and then I'll say slide out left and then slide in right. So let's try this one more time. So we should see an animation where there's the main activity, which has the recycler view, should move out to the left, and the map activity should come in following that, in some ways replacing it, coming in from the right. Nice. So you can see that it does that. And that, at least to me, it feels really natural that we've selected something in this view, and then we're naturally sliding in to figure out, to learn more about what's inside of that, that map. Like usual, there are a ton of extensions that you could do now that you've built out the base implementation. First, the map creation should start at where you're currently located. So right now we're always hard coding this to be Silicon Valley, but it probably makes more sense to drop the user off where they're currently located um, because that's more likely where they're going to be creating maps. Another extension you could do is show more info about maps in that initial recycler view screen. So right now we only show the map title, but you could imagine how it could be really valuable to show the number of markers, for example. Or if you wanted to integrate users, you could have the username of whoever created that map in the recycler view. And then one more idea I had was store the data on a server. Right now, as we talked about, it's kind of a hack that we're storing things in a local file and you could change it into using a SQLite database such as Room. But another extension you could do on top of that is actually putting the data on the, in the cloud in a server somewhere using Firebase or Parse or whatever you want to use. And that could unlock a lot of functionality with being able to share your map with other people. So those are just a few of the ideas I had. Let me know if you have any other ideas and if you implement any of them, definitely drop a comment and I'd love to check out what you make. So there's a lot that we've covered in these set of videos. First of all, we used a recycler view to render the list of map titles on the main activity. When you tap on the floating action button, we navigate to a new activity and all the navigation is happening through the intent system on Android. And that brings you to this screen and we're using a menu in order to show the save icon. Then of course, we're using Google Maps API in order to render a map and we're using different operations on the map object, such as 
on long press listener or on window click listener in order to be able to drop pins and leave details about each marker. And finally, we're using input and output streams in order to take all the map data and persist it into a file. I hope you had fun building out this application. I'd love any feedback, whether you got stuck at a particular place or if you just built out a really cool map and you, you wanted to share, I'd love to see it. That's all I had for now. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time.